I have an idea. Let's talk about bones. Hi, Bo Felkemin. Yai Hetter, Sam Lenz. Today I'm struggling to remember the fraction of Norsk that I know, but we're also talking about the beautiful bones decorating Gazgul's powerful armor. This will be the second to the last video in the Gazgul series. Originally I wanted to do a video on his textured trousers and his red loincloth, but I think some better options will come along in the future um, to, to talk about those colors. The color red is, well, you have a lot of options at your disposal, so I want to talk about that in a more major way on a, maybe a blood angel or something like that. So today though, we enter the bone tone zone. <clears throat> So let's get into it. Let's talk about that bone tone zone, Jack. You can see I already started one of the tusks just to get a sense of uh, what my life was all about. I'm happy with this direction. But let's lay it out on this uh, semi-nude horn. So I'll take a little bit of Ushtabi bone Combine it with some thornwood green. And that will be my base color. I'm just going to block it in here to set the foundation for my coming tones. All right, with that base coated, we'll just do a star wipe and it will be dry. A star wipe and it will be dry. Huh. Well,. I guess it's dry enough anyways. So now what I'll do is just set a wet blended gradient up, throw down some thornwood green in the middle, and then I'll grab some Ushtabi bone, place that towards the base, swipe off my brush. And I'll, bling, <clears throat> and I'll bring a little bit of black onto the tip. It's kind of a clunky model. This is a tricky position. Have no fear. There is no fear here. And that is what we get by fearing nothing. We'll have to wrap that around the entire tusk. So let us do so. With that portion complete, we'll go through and just lay down another wet blended gradient. I want all these colors to be nice and solid very saturated versions of themselves and wet blending is a very quick process so we definitely have the time to go and just lay another layer down and let's keep this lower facing a little darker naturally a shadow would occur so I'll, I'll bring the thornwood green a little bit further in that direction and I won't highlight it so uh, dramatically with the Ushtabi bone. I'll switch over to a smaller brush and pull out some of these highlights on these tusks. And just remember as the the highlight travels down the, um, the tusk. It's going to drop in color a little bit. So just mix a touch of thornwood green into your highlights as they pass into that darker area. And in some of these deeper crevices, I'll also bring a line of thornwood green in there. And we'll feather a little bit of black towards the tip there. Now let's mix up 
a neutral gray, more black and white. And we want to remember that Gazgul is kind of standing at this, this angle. And I want a small reflection, or a, I should say a small um, highlight in, the, in the, just the right spot on these tusks. And now I have a little bit of Army Painter brown wash left over from the other day. Just give it an all over coat. And we'll let that sit and dry. With our crude foundation laid down, it was time for a little bit of finesse. Pull out my tiniest, sharpest paintbrush. And start working inside of some of these grooves. I'll take some thornwood green. Just add to this, these grooves. holding my breath between brush strokes, trying to pick up on every little line of texture. Some areas may not be perfect after the wash, mainly this deep crease right here, so I want to paint that in. Let's take a black line. I'll put a touch of thornwood green in there. Let's drop a dark line right around the base. And finally, I can start introducing small amounts of white into my Ushtabi bone. We'll also brighten up this tip with just a very, very slight amount of paint. Less is more. I can just get a final tiny white point laid down. And maybe, just maybe, here and there, I'll put a little superficial scratch or a notch. I mean, if his armor is this scraped up, these bones will have received a bit of uh, a bit of use as well. And I'll just introduce a little bit of very thin amount of mid-tone. In case anything was lost between all these washes and scratches and all that, get a nice deep olive brown tone to the bone. Let's address the skull festooned atop this Tonka truck. So when you're blending up bone, personally, I like a very textured skull, something that has gone through a lot of life, a lot of living. Well, not anymore, but this will be easy because all I'm doing is stippling paint down and as long as I don't cover up the previous step, I'll have a nice textured progression going on. Very suitable for a you know, battle damaged skull, especially on whatever kind of alien warthog beast Gazgul uh, made love with the night before and then strapped on top of his power armor. But yeah, we'll just take we'll take care of all these upward facing angles, really sharpening our details. Don't be afraid to be rough with it. Get a nice it's kind of fun. You get a cool result. To treat all tusks equally here as it grows out it's going to get much darker towards the tip as the keratin ages and is weathered with some crude highlights in place let's take some black mix it with thornwood green water that down And now, you know, corralling all of that, that rough texture with some smooth blends reaching into the shadows. Now it's gonna give us a really nice look. It's a way to kind of smooth things out, accent the dimensions. 
makes a little bit of that that raggedness make a little more sense and let's get some army painter wash add just a touch of black and thornwood green into that just so everything is related and we'll sweep this all over the surface dulling everything down again enveloping these enveloping these blends and making everything wash together haha -ha. sink and fade into place final round let's brighten those brights and darken those depths take a little bit of Ushtabi bone, a slight amount of white mixed together, very, very carefully, making sure to continue carrying that texture even into these final highlights, just very small dots and slashes. Keep in mind where the most light would be accumulating. We want to work in, in gradients and not just uniformly highlight every surface. There might be some areas that aren't as well defined by the, the wash as I would prefer. In those areas, a little bit of a black line, just kind of tracing into the grooves. That'll be a big help. And there he is, all boned up. I hope you enjoyed this video on the bone tone. Um, bones are very fun. They're like one of those topics similar to stone where it, they can almost take on any color depending on their environment and how the decay occurred. So as I see this video, it's, it's a more simple approach to creating a, a bony tone, but there's so much variety can occur. So we'll definitely be revisiting this subject matter in the future as certain projects provide. Until that time, stay tuned, get out there, get your teeth wet, and let's paint the world. What's that you Whoa. What's that you say? I have an idea. Let's talk about bones. <laughs>
And there he is, all boned up. And there he is, all boned up. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be plenty more to come. Uh, <laughs> and there he is, all boned up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be just a couple more to come on old Gazzy Boy, and then we can move on to some. And there he is, all boned up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, painting bones is a very interesting subject because they're one of those materials that can can really change based on what the situation was that the uh, the. <clears throat>